The LSS Gen 3 is a clean slate of modularity. Whether you specialize in one shooting discipline or a jack of all trades, the LSS chassis is a tool you need to maximize your accuracy and precision. If you only want one rifle, but you need it to do absolutely everything, this is for you. In this video, we're gonna go over the unboxing, talk about some of the features and benefits, and we're gonna look at the installation for most of our actions. If you order it in a kit configured off the website, you're gonna get a big box like this, or you can order the pieces individually and find smaller boxes you can assemble yourself. Right now, we're just gonna unbox this kit. So this is the box that you're gonna find if you order the kit off the website for the LSS Gen 3. Similar to the rest of the MDT boxes, it's well designed, it looks really cool. And it's got some information on the back and you can see a lot of the configurations that are available for the LSS Gen 3. All right, we're gonna take a look inside the box here. So opening it up, you see it's got some nice padding here to protect your chassis system uh, for shipping. We had a user manual that goes over all the installation of all the pieces. So right here we have the core. So this is where your action is gonna bolt into. It's got your selected forend. In this case, we have the competition forend. We have our buttstock. We have a grip with the connector bar to attach to the buttstock. And you have your buttstock interface that connects the buttstock and the grip to the core. One of the most important things for having an accurate rifle is having a solid connection between your action and your chassis. The way that we achieve this solid connection is by machining a V with multiple angles into the bedding surface of our chassis where it connects with your action. This ensures that no matter what action you're bedding into this chassis, it's always gonna maintain a solid connection with it without having to go to a gunsmith to get it inletted or bedded. Another important feature along with the V-block bedding of the chassis is a free-floated forend underneath the barrel. Having a free-floated forend underneath the barrel allows you to put pressure on the forend of the chassis whether you're using a bipod or shooting off a bag. So the barrel between these two areas is not touching. I can grip the forend in a way that it's not gonna interfere with the barrel and affect the accuracy of my shot. One of the big benefits of the MDT chassis systems is that it converts your rifle to use AICS magazines. They're available in polymer or metal in a number of different calibers and sizes. So you can go with a three round if you want something a little more lightweight and you wanna go hunting, or you can do 10 or a 12 round magazine if you're shooting competitions or having fun with the range. Polymer magazines are lightweight, they're reliable, quiet because you don't have metal rattling around, and they're also more inexpensive than the metal options. Metal magazines offer the ability to fine tune the feed lips on your magazine so you have more reliable feeding, and they also offer a lower profile so if you're competition shooting, you can clear your props easier. AICS magazines enable you to upgrade your rifle for reliable feeding and are the industry standard for bolt action rifles. You have an ambidextrous mag latch here, which is great if you're a left or right-handed shooter. Another feature is the barricade stop on the front of the magwell. This allows you to put forward pressure into a shooting bag when you're shooting off a prop in a competition. It protects the magazine itself from this pressure so that you have reliable feeding. The polymer panels covers the aluminum chassis, keeping things nice and warm if you're out hunting or shooting in cold weather. It gives you a nice contour and a comfortable grip for when you're holding your rifle. Another important feature here is the M-Lock slots on the bottom of the forend. You can mount whatever accessories you need to, including Picatinny and Arca rails for different styles of bipods. You can mount tripods. Installation with these is quite simple. Insert the nut into the slot, making sure that everything's in line and that it drops in. And then you can tighten the nut with putting slight pressure on it to make sure it grabs. If you order just the core of the LSS Gen 3, these are the components that you're gonna see come with it. The first thing that we're gonna do is remove the nylon nuts that are capturing the action screws in the core of the LSS Gen 3. With our action upside down, we're gonna install the core over the action of your rifle, making sure the magwell and the front and rear action screws are lined up properly. We'll back the action screws out until they drop in, and you tighten them down just until they make contact. Next, you'll hold your rifle vertically, just give it a few taps to make sure that the recoil lug and everything's seated properly. We'll take our 316s Allen key and just snug them up just a little bit. Next, we're gonna use some sort of torque driver or torque wrench to tighten up the action screws to 65 inch pounds, alternating between the front and the rear action screw until you reach that limit. You can start with 25 inch pounds and then tighten all the way up to 65 inch pounds. Now we're ready to build this however we want. We're gonna install the buttstock interface onto the core of the chassis. This one comes with a Picatinny interface 
but we also have XTN carbine, so you can choose whichever one you like. Right now, I'm gonna to choose to go with the XTN interface to build a competition rifle with our LSS Gen 3. To install the XTN buttstock interface, you're gonna need a one quarter, a 3 16 and a 5 16 Allen key. First, we're gonna install the trigger guard onto the buttstock interface by just pushing the trigger guard onto the retaining pin. And then we're gonna back out the bolt that holds the buttstock to the interface. Next, we're gonna slide the interface forward into place and hold it there while we grab our one quarter inch Allen key so we can tighten down this bolt. Next, we're gonna install our vertical bolt using a 3 16 Allen key into the interface or through the interface into the core. The interface also comes with an M-lock slot on both sides but now we're gonna install the buttstock. Right now we're gonna talk about some of the buttstock options that are available for the LSS Gen 3. Here we have a number of them. There are more coming available later in this year, however. The first we have our CCS buttstock. It's a polymer buttstock with adjustable length of pull using spacers and adjustable cheek riser. Length of pull for a rifle is defined by the distance between the end of the buttstock here and where your trigger sits in the trigger guard. You can adjust the length of the buttstock, either shortening it or lengthening it, depending on the size of the shooter. And this allows you to get more square behind your rifle. Being more square allows you to control the recoil of your rifle better and remain on target behind your scope. How long your buttstock should be depends on your shooting style and the size of the shooter. With a more modern style of shooting with bipods and tripods, you wanna get square behind your rifle. You're gonna place the recoil pad in line with your dominant shooting eye and you're gonna reach forward, grabbing whatever support device, like a bag here, that you're gonna be using and keeping your arms straight. It's always good to get a buddy to come check your shooting stance to make sure that you're absolutely square and you're not bladed off to one side because you have too many spacers in your buttstock. In order to adjust the length of your buttstock, you're gonna need a 5 30 seconds Allen key, as well as the buttstock spacers. We're gonna use our Allen key to insert into the back of the buttstock through the recoil pad, loosening off the screws, but we don't need to remove them completely. Once the screws have been backed out, we could take one of our spacers and with the slots in the spacer, we can insert it into the buttstock in the middle and then give it a twist. Once you have your required number of spacers inserted, you can then just tighten your screws, ensuring the recoil pad clamps down on the buttstock and you're ready to go. The cheek riser is also adjustable, so you can raise or lower it depending on the size of your shooter and the height of your scope. It's adjustable by using a 1 8 Allen key. You just have to loosen off the set screws on each side and then you can move the cheek piece up and down. Similar to that, we have the SES Lite, which is an aluminum version with adjustable cheek riser and length of pull. We have our SES buttstock, which is the most modular version of our carbine buttstocks. You can adjust the length of pull using the thumb wheel here. You can move your recoil pad up or down, and you can move your cheek riser up or down as well. Additionally, there's a QD mount on the left and right side at the bottom of the buttstock to install a sling however you want to carry your rifle. These are the SRS buttstocks available with the XTN interface. This is the SRS X buttstock with the XTN interface and it's sort of the standard buttstock that you can use when you wanna go with the highly modular uh, skeleton rifle stock. We have our Premier Short, our standard. With this, it has the adjustable cheek piece. You can move it up or down. Uh, you can also adjust your length of pull and the vertical position of your butt pad. In addition to being able to adjust the vertical position, of your cheek riser here. You can also adjust it left or right so you have that perfect position behind your glass. It has QD mounts on the left and the right side in two positions on the buttstock. Underneath, it has an M-lock slot so you can attach accessories like a bag rider. So this is the SRS-X Lite found in the ACC Premier Gen 2. This is the simplified version of the SRS buttstock, the SRS Lite. You can adjust the length of pull using spacers. You can also adjust the height of your cheek riser using these set screws here, and as well, the position fore and aft for your cheek riser there. It comes with a QD mount on the left and right side of your buttstock, as well as an M-lock slot for attaching any sort of accessories such as a bag rider. This is the SRSX Elite buttstock with the XTN interface. It has push button adjustable cheek risers, as well as length of pull. It has a magnetic tool compartment to hold Allen wrenches that you might be able to use if you need to tighten something down on your chassis. 
The cheek riser is adjustable fore and aft for a perfect position. The recoil pad is adjustable vertically as well as to be able to cant side to side. You have the ability to add the connector bar with the MDT grips and it has an M-lock slot at the bottom so you can attach whatever accessory you want there as well as QD sling mounts at the bottom of the buttstock. Right now we're just going to take a quick look at the SRS XF buttstock. It has a folding capability so you can fold this onto the side of your rifle to reduce its size when you're carrying it around. First thing we're going to talk about is the length of our buttstock. So we can adjust that using this screw here. You want to loosen that off and then you can use the thumb wheel to increase or decrease your length of pull. Once you have it adjusted to where you want it, you can lock it down so it doesn't move. You can use this thumb wheel to loosen off and you can adjust the vertical height of your recoil pad here. And once that is in position where you want it, lock it down with that as well. There's a set screw on the other side to tighten down to really make it snug. We can also adjust the cant side to side on the back of the buttstock by removing the set screw on the left hand side, removing our recoil pad and loosening off the two screws holding the buttstock in place. That way we can move this side to side and left and right for a bit of cant. Once we have the cant that we want set, we can tighten these down. We replace our recoil pad. We place our set screw and we lock everything in place where we want it. Finally, we can adjust the cheek piece using the two thumb screws here. You can raise it or lower it into position wherever you want it and then lock it down. And you can use a 1 8 Allen key to loosen off the top. And you can adjust your cheek piece side to side so you can get your face in a nice, comfortable shooting position behind your glass. Once it's where you want it, you can tighten these down and lock it into place. This buttstock is the one we're going to use today for our LSS Gen 3 build. First, we're going to unfold this so we can get access to the heads of the screws that mount it. Once you've opened up the knuckle on the folding portion of the buttstock, you want to maintain it at a slight angle so you can access the head of the nut or the head of the screw with your Allen key. In this case, we're using the 732nd Allen key that is included with the packaging of the buttstock. We're going to slide the buttstock forward onto the XTN interface. We're going to install our Allen key and tighten down the screw. Once we've tightened that down as much as we can by hand, we can test out the folding feature of the buttstock, making sure that we can open and close it. To close it, we just got to press the top button here. And it's in place and ready to go. One thing you'll notice with the folding buttstock is that with the bolt in the closed position, the folding portion of the buttstock is perfectly designed to encompass that bolt handle, give you a nice slim profile for carrying. Right now we have a competition forend and a tactical forend available for the LSS Gen 3. We also have a hunting forend coming in at the end of year 2025. The tactical forend has M-lock slots along the sides and bottom of the forend, as well as an integrated NV bridge. This is great for if you want to use a night vision or thermal optic for shooting in low light conditions. A few of the features available for the competition forend are M-lock slots all along the bottom of the forend as well as the sides here. It has an integrated arca rail for use with some of our bipods as well as a tripod for shooting. And it's drilled and tapped to be able to use the NV or control bridges available for the ACC. Now we're going to install our competition forend on the LSS using a T25 Pork spit. We're just going to loosen off the screws on the forend to remove our polymer panels. Once we remove the screws, the panels will slide off. We can replace them with the competition forend and reinstall the hardware. If I ever want to change forends to go from competition to a tactical or a hunting forend, it's as simple as removing the same hardware, sliding that forend off, and installing the newer forend in place and reinstalling the mounting hardware. To finish the installation of the competition forend, we're just gonna reinstall the six screws 
and check to make sure they're tight. We're gonna make sure everything's tightened up so that our four ends securely in place. Lastly, we're gonna look at installing the grip to complete our LSS Gen 3 build. There's tons of grip options available from MDT or any other AR15 style grip. We have our angle grips such as the Premier, the Elite, our wood and carbon fiber, as well as a number of different vertical grips, including the Elite and the Elite with the connector bar option. These allow you to adjust uh, a number of different options, including the tilt and the forward and back position. So you get that perfect trigger pull when you need to in a competition. Today, we're gonna to be installing our angled grip on the LSS Gen 3 build. For this, we're gonna need our grip and a 964 Allen key. We're just gonna remove the grip screw from the base of our buttstock interface here, insert it through the bottom of the grip, ensure the threads line up and the grip sits securely. We'll back the threads out and make sure they catch. And then we're gonna tighten down the grip. Once the base, the buttstock, the forend, and the grip are installed, there you have it. One of the millions of configurable options for the LSS Gen 3. The LSS Gen 3 is compatible with a ton of different actions. Look at the bottom of the product page and see which ones are available.